I'm, I'm going to be talking about snowflakes and in particular about uh, why it is that people started studying snowflakes um, and that will sort of lead into a discussion of why it is that people became curious about questions like that because it's a question that you know at face value um, why should you care where snowflakes come from why they look the way they do but it's um, so I'm really talking about the beginnings of curiosity which was really the beginnings of modern science and why it became okay to ask any question about anything about 1650 um, and I'll show you exactly why that is I mean you know roughly with but within sort of 10 or 20 years it's it's, it's quite amazing that, that things ha really began to happen then certainly within the, the 17th century at the beginning of that century being curious was a little bit questionable a little bit iffy by the end of it it was at least in some areas of society it was a respectable thing to be so something happened then and um, I'll be saying a little bit about you know, what that was and why that was Um, one of the things I'm going to be talking about tonight is actually the value of little experiments. Um, so, you know, it's tempting with that sort of brief to say, I'm going to figure out what dark energy is or something. Um, you know, I mean, you wouldn't even know, I wouldn't even know how to begin to, to answer that question. And I think it's a fantastic question. But I think that a lot of the, uh, the experiments that I find most appealing are ones that you do on a bench job, often with stuff that's just homemade, that's cheap. And, you know, we tend to think because we have these big experiments that, um, that, you know, that's the way science works now. But I think a lot of the most uh, fascinating science and certainly some of the most curious science, so when people can just sort of follow their nose, that comes from experiments where you're free to do that because you've made your own equipment. It costs next to nothing. So in, uh, you can tell that I'm avoiding the question in a way because I'm not going to say, you know, I would ask this particular question. But what I would advocate is that for a lot of curiosity driven research is uh, that the fant a fantastic way to do it is on the cheap because there's still loads of questions that we can ask. Um, ones that you know you don't even know what's going to happen. You set something up and you find something weird that comes out of it and you know if you're doing it at that scale you can just follow your nose whereas if you're planning the LHC then you have to pr have it planned 10 years in advance and you've all decided what questions you're going to ask. Um, so, you know, I think it's those, that sort of science that, um, that often appeals to me.